production in Las Vegas. And about 95% of the CPU boards he gets back from the field have that problem. So that's something you might want to really look at first before you go ahead and call a service tech. I know you have to probably go through the hassles of getting your gaming commissioner to come out there, unlock the game, and pull the board out. And it's worth a shot, though, you know, if you want to get the game back. Because uh, the casino, they want that game up as quick as possible, you know, usually because they're losing money the longer it stays down. And if we have our guys on the other side, like in Northern California, the northern end of the southern part of California, and you're down at Golden Acorn, and you have a service call, it's gonna take them a few hours to get down there. So it's just a good thing to go ahead and try that first, if you have that blackout problem on the screen and your fault LED is lit. A lot of times that will fix the problem. And I think we actually experienced that here just a little while ago, Did you didn't guess we? what that was? It, it's a possibility. That or the EEPROM wasn't snapped in good enough. Any interruption in your data or address lines can cause the game to quit working. But that is the key, is to look for that, L, that fault LED on the I.O. board staying lit. Okay. And here's a video I.O. board right here I happen to have. Let's see if I can get you the fault LED. Oh, look at it. <coughs> what oh, yeah. Okay. See, remember all these LEDs? Oh, those, those, yeah. yeah. This one here is right by that little 8-pin dip pack, SW2. That, that, that one stays lit when you power it up, then you usually have that data problem. When you first power it up, that lights up for about one second and it turns off. Then you know, then you wait for the bong. You get your bong, everything is fine, usually. If not, if you'll see a tilt on the screen if there's something else, bad bill validator, or hopper, or whatever. Okay. Okay. Let's see. That was an important, that's your important chip there. And if you notice on, on that, uh, the CPU board, that's about the only one that is uh, socketed besides your EEPROMs. Because everything else is surface mounted to the board. Okay. Let's go over here, number eight. That's your fault LED. That, that will stay lit if there's a, a problem with the data as well. And when you power up the game, that flashes for a second and goes out, and then the game comes up. Okay. Your DS1. Seven segment display. Yeah, at the bottom of the page, it's listed as a DS1 LED seven segment display. So it's a seven segment LED, whereas on your I.O. board, it's just a a single LED. Okay. Here, number seven. That's your XU27% key socket. And that is right there. You can see the XU27. And you can see that little notch there. That means that the notch goes to the right. Let's go up here to number three. Uh, three there. And over here on the board. That, notice that one is surface mounted to the CPU board. What do that do? Okay, that's your ADSP chip, Analog Digital Signal Processor. What that does, it converts the analog to digital signal, your, your audio section, which is everything down in this region right here. Digital analog. Digital analog. Well, in this case, yes. Well, you have your DAC, which is digital analog converter, and ADSP, which is analog digital signal processor. It does pretty much do it in that order that you're saying, but I don't know what they call it ADSP, which is analog digital signal processor. 
which doesn't necessarily mean it processes it in that order. Now you're, if you can get this section down in here, we're covering a 16, 17, 10, and 13, your audio EPROMs. Right there. And over here on the board, you can see the sockets. Now, your game won't be complete unless you have your sound EPROMs on, on the board. And, Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> you will notice that they are numbered, each socket. You've got 17, 18, 30, and 31. Remember how I was saying how the uh, chips are labeled on the, on the CPU board? Starts at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Comes over to the next column, 8, 9, 10, 11, <coughs> and so, so on and so forth. OK. Now, as, as we're coming down the board from the edge connector, Column-wise, they're pretty much numerical. You'll have XU17, 18, and then you have different U chips that would normally be here. And then over here, you have 30 and 31. Thank you. You're welcome. And some of our games use four sound EPROMs. Some, we have some themes that only use one or two. So if you were to get like a Life of Luxury game conversion, you would find that it would only have an XU17 EEPROM. And it wouldn't have an 18, 30, 30, or 31. The more complex the sounds, the more songs, the right. more EEPROMs. All that is is your sound memory. Each one is four or eight megabytes, depending on what the label says. And remember, JP3, if it's on pins one and two, it's for a four megabyte EEPROM pins two and three for an eight megabyte EEPROM. So you want to pay attention to those details as well. So it can hold up to the 32 megabytes of sound memory on all four EEPROMs if they're eight meg. So that's why we have such a pretty good uh, sound as far as our game goes compared to our competitor. Our games even talk. I'm sure you've heard them say things in, in the bonus round that. The clarity is really good on them, actually. Is it possible to have a four megabyte and a They all, right. Our, our software engineers have designed it to where they will either be either four meg or eight meg. So you really have to read the label. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what are the symptoms if these aren't in correctly? OK, if, if the EPROMs are not in correctly, you won't have any sound. You can have some sounds, and you're missing sounds. And as I had mentioned, if the jumper is in the wrong position, you'll hear two startup bongs. That's the most common problem with that. But because this is not critical to gameplay, you won't get any tilt messages, any error messages in that regard. Correct. You will not see any messages on the, on the display screen. But you will not hear any sound, or some distorted sounds even. I had a situation one time where every time they spin, <coughs> Mm -hmm. It would do a really high pitched chirp, and I was told that it was possibly one of those ran wrong. Or right, they can be in wrong. You can also have a bent pin. That will cause a high pitched chirp, and then yeah. down the line you'll have some sounds working and some won't work. Okay. You know, so what I usually do is I'll pop the sound EPROMs out, look at them close, check for bent pins, make sure they're in the right socket 17, 18, 30, and 31 and make sure none of them are in backwards. So those are, are common problems with your audio chips. OK. That's your pretty much your audio section up there. If you want to zoom in on the, uh, let's see, this region right up in here. OK, all this is your audio region here, like your analog digital signal processor. That converts all the digital um, sample sounds into analog. And from there, it goes on to your I.O. board, your video I.O. board, where it is processed through the audio amplifier and then sent out to your speaker. And we'll cover that when we get to the audio I.O. board. Now, these chips here are your audio buffers. 
those surface mounts, all three of those. And that's part of, all that there would be considered your audio section. Other than the audio amplifier. Right, that's just the digital part of the audio section. The audio amplifier section is in your video I.O. board. Okay, let's go down the board. Okay, we really don't put much emphasis on this. This is your video processing area. That's your video processor there. Your video SRAM memory there. Yep, all four of those. Each one of those is a half meg, so you have four megs of video memory. And there's your crystal, your buffer, and then it gets processed, the video signals from your all your graphics chips, and then it comes out this plug right here, your VGA. And from there, it goes on out to your monitor. Very logical layout. You can almost see it happening when you look yeah. at the board. Starting here, coming through there, and then coming out the connector. Yep. It all flows together. And when you get into the board repair component level, we will touch exactly on what each component does. For now, we just want to do the overview of how the board is put together and the game itself.